Today our topic is alkaline earth metals, group two elements of S block. Alkaline earth metals, they are the second group elements, and the elements are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium and out of these elements radium is radioactive their electronic configuration general electronic configuration ns2 for example beryllium 1s2 2s2 magnesium 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 so in the case of these elements their electronic configuration ends with the s2 so we can consider the general outer electronic configuration as NS2. So they can release uh, two electrons because of their electropositive character. Atomic and ionic ready increases as we move down the group. Atomic and ionic ready increase as we move down the group. And the ionization enthalpy, since the atomic size increases down the group, their ionization enthalpy decreases down the group hydration and alpies like alkali metal ions the hydration and alpies of alkaline earth metal ions decreases with increase in ionic size down the group hydration and alpi decreases down so which element has the highest hydration and alpi the smallest one that is beryllium ion has the highest ionization sorry hydration and alpi and as we move down the group, this hydration and enthalpy decreases. These are the some atomic properties of the elements. The hydration and enthalpy, a little more about the hydration and enthalpy. You can see the highest value of hydration and enthalpy is for beryllium. This gradually decreasing down the group. The hydration and alpies of alkaline earth metal ions are larger than those of alkali metal ions. Thus, compounds of alkaline earth metals are more extensively hydrated than those of alkali metals. So you have to listen to this particular point. Why the compounds of alkaline earth metals are more extensively hydrated? What is the reason? Because they are the Hydration enthalpies of alkaline earth metals, metal ions are larger than those of alkali metals. That is the reason. Hydration enthalpies of alkaline earth metal ions are larger than those of alkali metal ions. Example, magnesium chloride exists as MgCl to 6H2 and calcium chloride exists as AsCl to 6H2. But in the case of alkali metals, they have no hydrate. In the case of NaCl and KCl, but lithium chloride will form. That is an exceptional case. Physical properties. The alkaline earth metals are silvery white, uh, lustrous and relatively soft, but harder than the alkali metals. However, as the size decreases and because of the release of two electrons, they will be harder than alkali metals. Beryllium and magnesium appear to be somewhat grayish. All of these are uh, silvery white metals. The melting and boiling points of these metals are higher than the corresponding alkali metals due to smaller size. Already I mentioned two electrons will be released from each metal. In the metal lattice, therefore, more number of electrons and uh, metal ion with a higher charge. Therefore, their uh, boiling and melting points are slightly higher. Calcium, strontium, and barium are characteristic brick red, crimson, and apple green colors, respectively, to the flame. Calcium, brick red color. Barium, pale green or apple green color. And strontium, crimson red color. So the flame colors, that is an important test to identify these ions. Electrons in beryllium and magnesium are 
too strongly bonded to get excited by flame. Flame cannot excite the electrons in magnesium and beryllium because they are very close to the nucleus. Hence, these elements do not impart any color to the flame. Chemical properties. Reactivity towards air and water. All these elements will react readily with air and water, but uh, not as vigorous as the alkali metals. And in the case of uh, beryllium, and to a certain extent magnesium, it will form a layer of oxide on its surface, so further reaction is not taking place here. But powdered beryllium burns brilliantly on ignition in air to give beryllium oxide and beryllium nitride, BeO and Be3N2. Magnesium, that is more electropositive. Again, magnesium burns with the dazzling brilliance in air to give magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride. Lower classes, may have seen the burning of magnesium ribbon. You may remember the flame obtained. Calcium, strontium, and barium are readily attacked by air to form the oxide and nitride. So here you have to listen. When they react with the air, they form oxide and also nitrides. But in the case of alkali materials, they can form only oxide except uh, lithium. Lithium can form nitride, but all other alkali metals can form only oxides. But alkaline earth metals can form oxides and nitrides. They also react to the water with the increasing vigor, even in cold to form hydroxides, just like alkali metals. Alkaline earth metals also form hydroxides with the water. Our reactivity towards halogens. The alkaline earth metals combines with the halogens at elevated temperatures forming their halides. Notice the difference. Alkali metals, they will react at ordinary temperature. Chlorine reacts with the sodium readily. Fluorine reacts with the sodium readily. But here, the reaction between alkaline earth metals and halogens takes place at a higher temperatures, elevated temperatures. They form halides of the formula MX2. MgCl2, MgF2, CF2. In the case of uh, beryllium fluoride, it is not possible to prepare by direct reaction between beryllium and fluorine. So it is prepared by the thermal decomposition of energy for twice BeF4. Ammonium beryllium fluoride. That on thermal decomposition gives beryllium fluoride, BEF2. And beryllium chloride is conveniently made from the oxide. BEO plus carbon plus Cl2 gives BCl2 plus CO. So it is an important reaction. It is not possible to prepare BCl2 directly. So beryllium oxide is treated with the chlorine in presence of carbon. Carbon will take this oxygen to form carbon monoxide. Beryllium chloride will form. Now reactivity towards hydrogen. All the elements except beryllium combine with the hydrogen upon heating to form their hydrides MH2, like alkali metals. Alkali metals react to the hydrogen to form hydrides. Alkaline earth metals also react to the hydrogen to form hydrides. And we can prepare reducing agents such as uh, lithium, aluminium, hydride. Reducing agents such as lithium, aluminium, hydrides can be used for the preparation of beryllium hydride. Beryllium hydride, we cannot prepare it by direct reaction between beryllium and hydrogen. So, it is prepared by the action of lithium aluminium hydride on beryllium chloride. 
So 2B Cl2 plus Li Al H4 gives 2B H2 plus Li Cl plus Al Cl3. Reactivity towards acids. The alkaline earth metals readily react with acids liberating dihydrogen. M plus 2 HCl gives MCl2 plus H2. In the chapter redox reactions, we mentioned all the metals with the negative electrode potentials can liberate hydrogen from its salt solution. Reducing nature, strong reducing agents. Alkaline earth metals are strong reducing agents, but the reducing power is less than those of their corresponding alkali metals. Only a comparison. Solutions in liquid ammonia, you know, alkali metals also dissolves in liquid ammonia to form blue solutions. Uh, that solutions are conducting, conducting solutions. Blue color, it has blue color. Similarly, alkaline earth metals also will dissolve in ammonia. To give deep blue black solutions forming ammoniated ions. Deep blue black solutions. Alkali metals, blue solutions. It is deep blue black solution. M plus X plus Y, NH3 gives MNH3X times 2 plus plus to ENH3Y times my. From these solutions, the ammoniates can be recovered. That means a complex. Ammoniates means complex. Complex can be recovered. We we'll study in detail about the complexes in the second year. Our uses of uh, alkaline earth metal. There are several uses. Burley means used in the manufacture of alloys. Copper burley alloys are used in the preparation of high strength springs. Spring for the preparation of high strength spring. This alloy is used. Metallic burley is used for making windows of X-ray tubes. Magnesium forms alloy with aluminum, zinc, manganese, and tin. Magnesium aluminum alloy alloys being light in mass are used in aircraft construction. Magnesium aluminum alloy is used in aircraft construction. Magnesium in the form of powder or in the form of ribbon is used in flash powders and bulbs. A suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water called milk of magnesium is used as antacid in medicine to reduce acidity in stomach. Magnesium carbonate is an ingredient of toothpaste. Calcium is used in the extraction of metals from oxides which are difficult to reduce with the carbon. Calcium and barium metals have often been used to remove air from vacuum tubes. Radium salts are used in radiotherapy, for example, in the treatment of cancer. These are the important uses. Now, general characteristics of compounds of the alkaline earth metals. Their oxides and hydroxides, already we mentioned, their oxides and hydroxides are basic in nature, but beryllium oxide is amphoteric in nature. Amphoteric means... It shows the properties of an acid and the uh, alkali. When it reacts with the strong acids, it will be a base. When it reacts with the strong bases, it will be an acid. That is some botric nature. Oxides and hydroxides of beryllium are botric in nature. While oxides of other elements are ionic in nature, and these oxides are uh, basic also. They react with the water to form sparingly soluble hydroxides. You know, alkali metal hydroxides are readily soluble in water, but the alkaline earth metal hydroxides are sparingly soluble in water. Not completely soluble. Beryllium hydroxide is amphoteric in nature as it reacts with the acids and alkali. Both uh, reactions are given here. BOH twice plus 2 OH minus gives reaction with the base. Means BOH twice is acid here. 
B O H four times two minus berlite ion. B E O H twice plus two H C L plus two H two O. Reactive with acid. Now it is a base. B O H four times C L two. Halides. Uh, the general characteristics of halides. Alkaline earth metal halides are ionic in nature, but beryllium halide is covalent in nature. Beryllium halides are essentially covalent and soluble in organic solvents. Beryllium chloride has a chain structure in the solid state, as it is shown here, a chain structure. You have to draw and study this structure of a beryllium chloride in solid state. And in the gaseous state, it will exist as a dimer through chlorine bridge. In the vapor phase, beryllium chloride tends to form a chlorobridged dimer, which dissociates into the linear molecule at a high temperatures of the order of 1200 Kelvin. So vapor state, a polymeric structure, but in, uh, sorry, solid state, a polymeric structure, but in vapor state, only two units will combine together. That is dimer. The tendency to form halide hydrates gradually decreases. For example, MgCl2H2O, CaCl2H2O, SrCl2H2O, and BaCl2H2O down to group. Tendency to form hydrates gradually decreases down to group. The dehydration of hydrated chlorides Bromides and iodides of calcium, strontium, barium can achieve on heating. On heating, they will remove the water of crystallization. Salts of oxo acids. Already we mentioned oxo acids are uh, acids in which uh, hydrogen, acidic hydrogen is part of hydroxyl group, OH group. H2CO3 carbonic acid is an oxo acid, H2SO4 sulfuric acid is an oxo acid, HNO3 nitric acid is an oxo acid. That's all we can see. Alkaline earth metals form carbonates. Carbonates of alkaline earth metals are insoluble in water. That is important, insoluble in water and can be precipitated by addition of sodium or ammonium carbonate solution to a solution of a soluble salt of these metals. Beryllium carbonate is unstable. That will decompose on heating. And alkaline earth metal carbonates on strong heating, they also will decompose. But alkaline metal carbonates are stable. They will not decompose. Sulfates of alkaline earth metals are all white solids and stable to heat. BSO4 and MgSO4 are readily soluble in water. The solubility decreases from calcium, calcium sulfate to barium sulfate. Only beryllium sulfate and magnesium sulfate are soluble in water completely. Other sulfates are uh, not soluble in water. And the solubility decreases as we move from calcium sulfate to barium sulfate. Nitrates. All the nitrates are soluble. The nitrates are made by dissolution of the carbonates in dilute nitric acid. Carbonates when treated with the nitric acid, you will get nitrates. All of them decompose on heating to give the oxide, like lithium nitrate. Lithium nitrate on heating decomposes to give oxide. So 2MNO3 choice gives MO plus 4NO2 plus O2. Here I am represent magnesium, calcium, strontium, or barium, alkaline earth metals. Okay, what are the gases produced? NO2 and O2. NO2 is reddish brown color. NO2 has reddish brown color, so that reddish brown color is visible and we can understand it is decomposed. Anomalous behavior of beryllium due to the reasons we already mentioned. Small size, high ionization enthalpy, high electronegativity and absence of D orbitals Beryllium shows some anomalous properties. It differs from other elements of alkaline earth metals. It forms compounds which are largely covalent and get easily hydrolyzed. Beryllium, already we mentioned halides of beryllium covalent, but other alkaline earth metal halides are ionic in nature. 
So its compounds are uh, largely covalent and get easily hydrolyzed, different from other alkaline earth metals. Beryllium does not exhibit coordination number more than four as in its valence shell there are only four orbitals. It has no d orbital, so cannot show a valency more than four. The oxides and hydroxides of beryllium are amphoteric. But the oxides and hydroxides of alkali, other alkaline earth metals are basic in nature. Our diagonal relationship between beryllium and aluminium. We discussed the direct diagonal relationship between lithium and magnesium in the previous topic. And here we will discuss the diagonal relationship between beryllium and aluminium. But the reason for this diagonal relationship, almost similar size, almost the same charge to radius ratio so here like aluminium beryllium is not readily attacked by acids because of the presence of an oxide flame beryllium forms an oxide coating in its surface then further reaction with acids not possible like aluminium beryllium hydroxide dissolves in excess of alkali to give a beryllite ion BOH four times two minus. Just as aluminum hydroxide gives aluminate ion, LOH four times minus. The chlorides of both beryllium and aluminum have Cl minus bridged chloride structure in vapor phase. Aluminum chloride also exists as a dimer in vapor state through a chlorine bridge. In the case of beryllium, also in the vapor stage, it exists as a dimer, but in solid state as a polymer. Some important compounds of calcium. Calcium oxide or quicklime, CaO. I have to remember this uh, name, quicklime. That is a commercial name of calcium oxide. It's also known as lime. CaO, calcium oxide, CaO is prepared from calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate on strong heating forms calcium oxide and CO2. At a temperature, 1070 to 1270 Kelvin. This calcium oxide readily absorbs moisture from moisture and carbon dioxide. Calcium oxide can absorb moisture and carbon dioxide. Then it will form calcium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. Addition of water to calcium oxide is known as slaking of lime. The product is calcium hydroxide. When you simply add water to calcium oxide, a highly exothermic reaction will take place with the formation of calcium hydroxide, that process is known as slaking of lime. Calcium oxide combines with acidic oxides such as silicon dioxide to form compounds. CaO plus SiO2 gives CaSiO3. Basic calcium oxide combines with acidic SiO2 to form calcium silicate. Uses of uh, calcium oxide. It is an important primary material for manufacturing cement and is the cheapest form of alkali. It is the cheapest alkali known. Calcium oxide. It is used in the manufacture of sodium carbonate from caustic soda. You know, If you want to prepare sodium carbonate from caustic soda, what is caustic soda? Sodium hydroxide. We can use this uh, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. It is employed in the purification of sugar and in the manufacture of dye stuff. These are some of the uses of uh, calcium oxide. Now calcium hydroxide, slacker lime, CaOH, toys. How will you prepare calcium hydroxide? 
by adding water to calcium oxide calcium hydroxide is prepared by adding water to quick lime cao the aqueous solution is known as lime water aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide is known as lime water and the suspension of slacker lime in water is known as milk of lime aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide in water is known as lime water and a suspension of slacker lime in water is known as milk of lime when carbon dioxide is passed through lime water lime water means lime water is calcium hydroxide solution lime water is calcium hydroxide solution when carbon dioxide passed through to passed through lime water time lime water turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate if you pass excess carbon dioxide through it what happens it will combine with uh, carbon dioxide and water to form calcium bicarbonate which is soluble so the color lime water the milky color of lime water will disappear if more amount of carbon dioxide is passed into it calcium bicarbonate is formed milk of lime react with the chlorine to form hypochlorite a constituent of bleaching powder calcium hydroxide will react with the chlorine to form bleaching powder CaCl2 plus Ca or Cl twice plus 2H2 it is not the exact uh, molecular formula of uh, bleaching powder that we will study in second year now what are the uses it is used in the preparation of mortar a building material calcium hydroxide it is used in white wash due due to its uh, disinfectant nature in order to whitewash walls fences calcium hydroxide is using <clears throat> this used in glass making in tanning industry for the preparation of bleaching powder and for purification of sugar now calcium carbonate cso3 calcium carbonate occurs in nature in several forms like limestone chalk marble etc can be prepared by passing carbon dioxide through slacker lime or by the addition of sodium carbonate to calcium chloride calcium chloride react with the sodium carbonate to form calcium carbonate it is available in the nature in the form of limestone marble chalk etc and in in any circumstances suppose uh, there is a need to prepare calcium carbonate in such cases you can pass carbon dioxide to calcium hydroxide or uh, uh, treat sodium calcium chloride with the sodium carbonate uses it is used as a building material in the form of marble and in the manufacture of quick lime calcium carbonate along with magnesium carbonate is used as a flux in the extraction of metals such as iron calcium carbonate is used in calcium carbonate on decomposition gives calcium oxide that is a basic substance that will combine with acidic oxides such as silicon dioxide already we mentioned it it is an application in metallurgy to remove the impurities such as sio2 plaster of paris cso4 half h2o calcium sulfate there are different types of calcium sulfate cso4 2h2o is known as gypsum cso4 half h2o is known as plaster of paris here we are discussing plaster of paris this is a hemi hydrate of calcium sulfate it is obtained when gypsum cso4 2h2o heated to 393 kelvin CaSO4 2H2 when it is heated strongly CaSO4 half H2 will form CaSO4 half H2 that is gypsum CaSO4 twice H2 
but it is given in a different way, not a TSO4 dot H2SO, H2O, CSO4 twice H2O plus 3 H2O. About 393 Kelvin, no water of crystallization is left and an hydrous calcium sulfate CaSO4 is formed. When you heat it to prepare uh, plaster of Paris, if the temperature is more than 393, you will not get plaster of Paris. Instead of that, you will get a dead band plaster, that is CaSO4, without any water of crystallization. The largest use of plaster of Paris is in the building industry as well as plasters, plaster for making plaster. It is also employed in dentistry, in ornamental work and for making casts of statues and busts. For making statues was the plaster of Paris. Cast will make and it will be filled with the the material which is using for making the statue. Cement. All of you know cement is a building material. It was first introduced in England in 1824 by Joseph Ospedi. It is also called Portland cement. What is the composition of Portland cement? Just uh, for an information, calcium oxide 50 to 60 percentage, SiO to silicon dioxide 20 to 25 percentage, Al2O3 alumina 5 to 10 percentage, magnesium oxide 2 to 3 percentage, ferric oxide Fe2O3 1 to 2 percentage, and sulfur trioxide SO3 1 to 2 percentage. This is the composition. For a good quality cement, the ratio of silica SiO2 to alumina L2O3 should be between 2.5 and 4. The ratio of SiO2 to L2O3, 2.5, between 2.5 and 4. That is a better quality cement. And the ratio of lime CaO2, the total of the oxides of silicon SiO2, aluminium, Oxide L2O3 and ion Fe2O3 should be as close as possible to 2. Ratio between lime CaO to the total of the oxides of silicon, aluminum and ion should be as close as possible to 2. <clears throat> CaO you know 50 to 60 percentage. So all together. L2O3, SiO2, Fe2O3, their percentage, when you add the percentage of these three right together, and uh, the ratio should be 2, calcium, percentage of calcium divided by percentage of all these oxides. That should be 2 or almost near 2, 2. The raw material in the manufacture of cement are limestone and clay. When clay and limestone are strongly heated together, they fuse and react to form cement clinker. This clinker is mixed with the two to three percentage by weight of gypsum to form cement. So it is the method of preparation of cement. Raw materials, cheap raw materials, clay and limestone. <clears throat> And these two heated strongly, they melt and fuse together and react to form a cement clinker. This clinker is mixed with the two to three percent by weight of gypsum to form cement. <clears throat> setting of cement. What is meant by setting of cement? When cement is mixed with the water, the setting of cement takes place to give a hard mass. All of you are experienced about the, the hardening of cement. This is due to the hydration of the molecules of the constituents of the rearrangement. Of the constituents and the rearrangement. Hydration of the molecules of the constituents. Already mentioned. Oxides of silica, aluminium, calcium, all these are present. 
the purpose of adding gypsum is only to slow down the process of setting up the cement gypsum can reduce setting time of cement now what is the biological importance of magnesium and calcium they are biologically very important metals an adult body contains about 25 g of magnesium and 1200 g of calcium all enzymes that utilize atp in phosphate transfer require magnesium as the cofactor here magnesium is like as a cofactor for the enzymes the main pigment for the absorption of light in plant is chlorophyll which contains magnesium so the metal present in chlorophyll magnesium about 99 percentage of body calcium is present in bones and teeth so calcium is very important to give strength to bones it also plays an important role in neuromuscular function interneuronal transmission cell membrane integrity and blood coagulation calcium plays an important role in neuromuscular function interneuronal transmission cell membrane integrity and blood coagulation by this the chapter is over you can stop it here and continue with another topic in the next class